Hi, I'm Warren Whitlock. I'm here with uh, my friends, Rob and Krista McNeely, and uh, howdy. Uh, and we're doing this because uh, the, the guest today, uh, is, uh, and it's all about uh, getting together and talking about a unique token drop that just happened. Um, but first, uh, let, me, let me start off with, tell me guys, how can you, uh, how did you happen to become crypto experts? That, uh, that's a good question. I don't know if there is such a thing as a crypto expert <laughs> too. Good point. Uh, yeah, and I, and I hate using the word crypto expert or guru. I mean, everybody out there is a guru or an expert like after like an hour. Um, what I can say is that uh, Christy and I being serial entrepreneurs, we tend to take deep dives when we jump into a new industry or a new technology and learn about as much as we can uh, just for our own edification. And so we can be smarter about how we do things. When in the case of crypto, um, we got interested because we became investors uh, last fall and started looking and reviewing many, many, many tokens where we were gonna spend our hard earned money. And what we found uh, through a lot of that due diligence is one, we got real, I think we got pretty smart about the tech and um, what it can do and what it is doing and largely what it isn't doing at this point. Um, and then we decided, you know, we wanted to figure out a way to help people not get scammed because what we saw out there was all these ridiculous scammers and marketers and all these people that are just trying to take you know, people's money. And we felt really strongly that there was a big gap in the crypto industry where I believe that the crypto industry is not self-policing itself and not regulating itself. And because of that, they're just naturally going to draw the very thing they say they don't like, and that's government intervention. If the crypto industry was regulating itself and policing itself, uh, you'd have less pressure on the government to come in and try to regulate it for them. And so that's what we started Original Crypto Coin for, is to help educate people about crypto. So like everybody else that's in crypto and no one's an expert, you came up with a, with a coin and now, and now people are looking at to, you, to you like an expert. But there's something different. Tell me about uh, the structure you did that makes uh, uh, the OCC different than the other tokens we've seen. Well, I think one of the things that we did is the velocity at which we launched this project has been like, what, 10 weeks now? So literally New Year's Day, we conceived this idea that maybe we should launch our own crypto. And within a week, we pulled together a team of, uh, you know, very well-rounded team of developers and stockbroker types and entrepreneur types and accountant types. Um, and so we're going to launch crypto and, and part of it originally, and, and I don't hide this fact, we were just trying to build a coin to see what it takes to launch one. We wanted to learn all the, where all those edges were. Um, and then along the way we started, cause we put a really good team together. We kept started brainstorming every time we were learning something new. And what we started figuring out where, what one of the holes in crypto is, is as much as there's a lot of talk about crypto, there's still not a lot of commerce happening with crypto. And it's not real easy and convenient for people. And what we decided is that as part of our project, why don't we start offering the tokens to be used in other people's projects for payments? Um, and then we started talking to outside developers and said, hey, we, we're gonna launch this crypto um, and we want you to use our tokens. And so we got at least three different projects outside of original crypto coin that are actually already starting to develop apps that will accept OCC as payment in one way, shape or form inside their apps. Um, and then to avoid the securities laws, not, you know, we're not a security. We actually gave away 56 billion tokens and it's not the largest, but it's one of the largest airdrops in crypto history, but it is the only airdrop where we actually took no personalized information from anybody, no signups, no emails. There's no chance of hurting anybody, no chance of spamming anybody. We weren't trying to build a marketing database. Um, and so I think we were the only, we're the largest airdrop in crypto history where there was not a string attached. Hmm. Okay, so um, there's no strings attached. You've done all this. It's 56 billion. So you must have just this giant background in fintech and finance and 
and building technology and coding, right? Tell us uh, about yourself. So, well, um, I'm a serial entrepreneur, recovering corporate MBA. Um, my, my current prod main day job is I'm a forensic expert. Uh, I work in construction defects and slip and fall kind of stuff. Um, but I've done a lot of different things as an entrepreneur. I've also been involved in radio for a long time, and social media for a long time. Uh, Christy is a medical doctor by training. And, but I can explain myself. Okay, well, you haven't <laughs> said anything, so. Because Rob doesn't ever stop. Talking. I'm sure everyone watching was thinking the same thing, Christy. Go right ahead. Um, so, yeah, I, as he said, I am a medical doctor, but I don't practice medicine. And what I actually do do and bring to this project largely is a strong experience in project management, especially project management with uh, remote teams. And so that's what I do for my day job in government contracting. And um, so I bring that as well as, you know, back in another lifetime, Rob and I ran a web development company and a social media marketing company. So kind of bring both those sides to the coin, both the, the blogging and the marketing, as well as kind of trying to keep all these ducks in a row and keep the project moving forward, which I think we've done pretty successfully so far. It took us about three weeks to give away the 56 billion tokens and less than three months to get from an idea to a finished airdrop and a token that's trading. So, yeah. so far so good. <laughs> so another thing Christy brings to the table is not only government contracting, but a great deal of government compliance background. So all she does is deal with the federal government in her day job, so to speak. Um, and so that's real important. So as far as a background in FinTech, um, no. I don't, but we do have a person on the team who is a stockbroker, and we have another person on the team that's a CPA tax accountant, um, and then Christy and I are pretty good at reading standards and laws, so we've spent a great deal of time talking to the SEC and talking to the you know, um, commodities, future training agencies, and, and all these different organizations, and learning about the actual laws. Um, part of what I do as a forensic expert is re -re um, research laws. And so I went back right to the, you know, original laws that all these rulings are based on and have looked up a lot of the case law about what makes a security, uh, things like that, what makes a commodity, what's an exempt commodity and all these things. And so when we started, before we ever even launched OCC, we didn't want to be a security and fall into that trap. And, and we wanted to start the project from the get-go where we were government compliant. We don't want to go to jail. We don't want to have a, a product out there and six months down the road, you know, get raided because we violated some obscure, you know, law because we just decided to put our fingers in our ears when someone says government compliant. Now, I understand there's a lot of people out there that are in crypto and, and they may become more from the activist side of things where they just don't care about the, the government and, you know, they just want to let, throw caution to the wind. Well, guess what? I'm a little more conservative than that. I, I understand and can respect that belief. And, and But if I'm going to build a company that is going to be sustainable long term, you got to try to figure out the balance between, you know, promoting freedom and not going to jail. Just saying. So, so uh, what happens next? How, what do you do now that you have dropped 56 billion tokens? Oh, we've got a bunch of things in the works. One is the token is trading on one decentralized exchange right now, Fork Delta, which is a fork of Ether Delta. Um, it's not um, the most user-friendly exchange for a new crypto trader. So we're working on um, getting the token listed on other exchanges. And we're continuing to build our knowledge base of educational material on our website and working with developers, some of which are new to blockchain technology and cryptocurrency on um, a number of different projects that they're launching that will incorporate the token. And then the last thing we're probably doing this year is um, at some point towards the end of the year, we'll be announcing the location of a conference, which um, will be happening, oh, I don't know sometime in the next nine months or so to go along with the educational aim of the token. And so just to, to piggyback on that, our, our structure, the corporate structure that we do have is a, uh, which is kind of unique. It's an LLC, but it's actually a, a, called a low profit LLC or an L3C. And there's only seven States in the country that have that. And so we kind of set ourselves up to where all we can do with, original crypto coin is do either charity or educational work. And, and our mission is to do educational work. Uh, again, trying to teach 
people about crypto, how to, you know, do create more awareness about crypto. Launching the coin, we didn't make any money. In fact, launching the coin cost us money. Literally, we spent thousands of dollars to launch a coin we made nothing on. Um, and so, but again, that our mission for OCC and what our tax status is for our corporate entity is education. And I think that's what makes us a little different is that we're trying to do good and give back to the community and help spread the community and grow the community. We're, we weren't here just to try to make a billion dollars of vaporware to just disappear in six months. Okay. So, uh, you know, I know you both for a, for a long time and I know, you know, your values are really are trying to help people, but, uh, I got to ask if, uh, you find another couple that wants to get into investing in crypto, do you tell them to go, um, mine their own token or what should people do if they want to get started? That's a good question. Um, and so, well, I, I think like anything else, I, I don't give financial advice because I'm not a financial planner and I don't have a license to do that. Um, but if I was given, well, I'll tell you the advice I give my friends and family. One, most cryptos are super high risk investments as are most ICOs. Uh, and so even though there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of talk about what's an accredited investor, but ultimately the, the way the government is structuring IPOs and these kind of things is they want people to, who are gonna invest in high risk investments to have a certain net worth with the idea that they could either lose the money and not hard, get harmed by that significantly, or that the fact that they have skills to obtain that type of wealth, they probably have better ideas on how to manage the risk of high risk investment. So I always start there and say, look, this is a super high risk place to invest. Do you have that kind of money that you could just throw away? Meaning, would you take $5,000 and invest in a crypto can you take it to the casino and, and be comfortable walking away from the casino having spent that money? So if I hear someone say the answer is no, then I say you shouldn't be investing in cryptos um, because there are much safer investments out there. Um, so I think, unfortunately, this is one of those things that you get into a lot of arguments uh, in social media about is, well, the government shouldn't tell me, you know, what I should do or shouldn't do with my money. Well, I agree with that. I think people should be responsible for their own money, but unfortunately, um, high risk investments there, there's a lot safer places to invest your money that will give you a nice return. Um, cryptos are real exciting because you can, there is a bigger risk and there is a big chance that you can make your Lambo right in like six months or three weeks, depending on who you are. Um, but unfortunately from when we started looking at, you know, doing our own coin and starting this project, this educational project is we kept seeing people getting hurt and people mortgaging their house and people taking money out on credit cards to invest in cryptocurrencies, which, in, and then they lose it or they get, you know, their money stolen by a scammer from just some, you know, really some kind of Ponzi scheme or something like that. So that's what kind of motivates us. And we live that we say, look, this is probably not the place for you if that is, is just beyond your risk threshold. All right. but, but if I am ready to invest in crypto, uh, should I should I make a token? Would you recommend what you did to other for other people? I don't think it's a first step for any for most people. Um, you need that team. You do need some programming background. I mean, there are some kind of walk yourself through it tutorials on on the internet, but I'm not sure that that's going to make a real money making project. Um, you know, we I, haven't made any money yet. <laughs> yeah, this certainly hasn't made, been a money making project for us yet. Um, some of the things I think we like to look at if you are looking for something, you know, look for, you need to evaluate what you're looking at. Every single coin or token out there, every project has its fans and its haters. If you're going to go on Facebook and take investment advice, uh, you know, it's kind of the luck of the draw. Which 10 minutes did you get on Facebook? Print? You know, did they, does everybody hate this token today or is it the little token that's got a big announcement coming and everyone's super excited about today? Um, and, that, and that changes sometimes on a daily basis, hourly basis some, sometimes, depending on the news. So, um, you know, looking at the roadmap, looking at the white paper, sometimes they're super technical, sometimes they're not at all. Ours isn't so much because that's not our point. But um, and looking at the team, looking at their communication, if, if they haven't made, you know, any interaction or any announcements or any activity on social media or news stories or anything in months, and, you know, supposedly they've been, but, you know, they've got all these milestones on their roadmap. Did they need them? Did they not? 
you know, that, that those are kind of red flags for whether there's a real project there or, or, you know, just some people sitting in around in a basement and being really happy they got all that money from their ICO. So I would look at a couple other things. Now, people always say, look at the management team. What does that actually mean? And when I hear that, and, and I've done a little bit of angel investing, I look at it like, have this management team borrowed money from somebody for a business and given that money back to the people that invested in them before? Let's start there. How about, has this management team been in jail for felonies? Let's look at that. Um, uh, I think another thing that I would look at, and I'm not trying to pick on any one place or country, but if you're investing in a foreign business in some way, you have far less recourse if it goes south than if you invest in a token or coin in your own home, home country. You might have more better recourse if you're an American and you invest in an American startup of some form if they take your money and run. So, uh, I, so I would just say use common sense, but first start, do you have the money to lose? And if you don't have the money to lose where you're having to borrow it, um, I, w I say cryptos are not a great place to start investing. <laughs> well, and so with that, then crypto uh, ends up being similar to any other kind of investment. Um, <laughs> and for a lot of people, the best place to invest first is to pay off the credit card, not go out and get more credit to, to be able to invest because you gotta you got to be pretty good to beat the credit card interest. Um, at, at any rate, uh, if somebody does want to follow you and find out more about OCC and the project, how about giving us a URL? We're at OriginalCryptoCoin.com. OriginalCryptoCoin.com. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there and following your, your progress. Thanks for uh, being on the podcast. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Warren. Warren.